Today my guest is James Montemagno. James, how are you? Very good. How are you doing, David? I'm doing great. What do you do? Uh, so I'm a developer evangelist at Xamarin, uh, focusing on cross-platform mobile development, all in C-sharp. Across iOS, Android, Mac, and of course Windows. Uh huh. Uh, so, cross you just described the company, the product, Xamarin. Xamarin's a product and a company, and uh, your job, right? Exactly. So, <laughs> Xamarin is a company, and we have multiple products uh, Xamarin iOS, Xamarin Android, Xamarin Mac, uh, and then we have testing products and analytics products as well. So, Xamarin Test Cloud and Xamarin Insights. So, and, and we also have a university offering as well for training. So, we kind of offer the entire mobile solution, if you will, for okay. the cross platform space. All right. And you told, we were telling me earlier you're talking a lot about uh, plugins for mm -hmm. Xamarin. Are you, which product does that apply to? So plugins. So part of the evangelism goal, as you know, is kind of helping developers uh, and delighting their development experience. So we want to make it easy for C Sharp and .NET and even F Sharp developers to create mobile apps. Um, but the best part about Xamarin is that you get access to all of the APIs. So no, regardless if you're targeting iOS, Android, or Windows, your apps are 100% native, your UIs are 100% native, and you get those API access and all in C Sharp. Hmm. So plugins is focused around the platform where we're creating the applications. And here's here's the problem. So problem first, and what's the solution? Well, you say on the platform. So you're saying you have different plugins for Android than you would for iOS than you would for Windows Phone. So here's the interesting part about plugins is that when you think about the mobile space and you have iOS, Android, and Windows, they all they all do different things, but they all in general do about 80% of the same things like mm -hmm. text to speech, mm -hmm. uh, geolocation, uh, settings, um, maps, I things like make, this. I hear they make phone calls too. They also make phone <laughs> calls or text messages, right? Or sharing a link somewhere, but they all do them with a different API. Right. So that's the problem for a developer coming to cross-platform development. Not only do they have to learn the UI bits of iOS and Android and Windows, but they have to learn the different APIs. Right. So as a .NET developer, I've been abstracting away code with interfaces for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. I create an interface, I implement it on any platform I want to go to, phone, store, iOS, or Android, but I'm then able to use that interface implementation in my shared code uh, and, and call one API to access those native features through like a, some sort of dependency service that I would basically get access to those native APIs, mm, okay. if you will. So it's a way of um, nougatizing uh, and taking one portable class library that you write your code against. Okay. But we do the hard work of writing the platform-specific code. So imagine, if you will, you want to access the current geolocation of your device. Mm -hmm. So instead of figuring out the iOS APIs, the Android APIs, and the Windows APIs, uh, what you do is you download a nougat called the Geolocator plugin for Xamarin and Windows. Okay. There's a whole flurry of different plugins out there. There's about 40 or 50 of them uh, built by some Xamarin's, but also by community members. And mm -hmm. they're all open source, all on NuGet. I see. So you download the NuGets and you download them into all of your projects. Mm -hmm. So it'll download your um, abstraction, if you will, your interface into your PCL or shared code, that the project that you have. Library. Okay. Yep, portable class libraries. Uh, and then it'll install the platform specific implementations for you. Hmm. you know, so you don't have to worry about okay. it, they're there. So now instead of writing into each platform, you say locator.getLocationAsync. And that will then go off to iOS world, Android world, or Windows world and do the correct thing for you automatically. Oh, okay. So now it's all shared code. You can add that plugin to one project, two plugins, four pro projects. I mean, one project, two projects, or three projects, right? Mm -hmm. okay. um, or just call it from shared code. So as a developer coming in, I want to take a photo, I want to pick a photo, I want to take a video, I want to access, like I said, text-to-speech or geolocation. I don't have to write those APIs, I just write and code against one API. It's really mm -hmm. nice, it's almost when you think of kind of what Microsoft is doing with the new, the Universal Windows platform, it's one set of APIs for everything, right. in a way. We've done that, but across all the platforms mm -hmm. and these different plugins. This is interesting, because I. Um, I've heard people talk about Xamarin and uh, in a dismissive way sometimes saying, you know, most mobile development that I do, it's all about the client. Mm -hmm. Any server-side stuff is done through a web service call. And this takes away that argument, I think, a little bit. There, I shouldn't say takes it away, but it eats away at it. 
Yeah, it takes it abstracting that way. Yeah, you you know you already maybe I have a back end. Maybe you're using Azure Mobile Services or mm -hmm. some web API and calling that in. So we have our shared code of calling that API, and that's our .NET bits. Right. The best part I love is that .NET is super powerful. Mm -hmm. and you have great APIs to access all of that across now iOS, Android, and Windows. But getting to that actual native performance, like the things that are powerful about iOS, Android, and Windows, the platform specific things you can now call from platform independent code. Mm -hmm. So, and it's still taking advantage of those native features. So that way you never really have to write tons and tons of iOS or Android code. So now your shared code percentage goes up as well. So maybe before you were sharing 50 or 60%, you get rid of all that code that you used to have, right? right. Install a plugin from NuGet and you're good to go. Okay, so that, uh, that seems um, almost absurdly simple. As, as a consumer of a package, I, I NuGet takes care of installing everything in the right place for me, first of all, which is great. Which is awesome. Um, and, uh, and then I need to just call the shared code or the portable class library, just like I would any other bit of code. And it's under the hood, it's calling everybody else. What, what, what if I need to, what if I want to write one of these? So uh, we have a, an online GitHub, and we'll put it in the show notes. Okay. There's a GitHub page, github.com slash Xamarin slash plugins, where you'll see a whole hand curated list of these. So you don't have to go fi try to find them on NuGet. We have a oh. nice list with, and description of where they live. Hmm. Additionally, we worked with a community on this project, and we have amazing development, uh, developer community uh, to open source all of these plugins that are out there so you can see what they're doing. Okay. And they're all under MIT license, so they're app store friendly licenses that you can use. Um, but on that GitHub page, you'll find some nice Visual Studio templates packs. Hmm. And what these will do is you'll say file new plugin for Xamarin and Windows. Oh. It'll create all of the projects, all of your interfaces for you automatically. It'll even set up your new spec for NuGet. So if you want to publish it to NuGet, hmm. just one file, it'll do it all for you automatically. Oh. So now what you have to do is just go ahead and define your interface, implement each method, and then you could share it with the rest of the development community. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, really and simple. And the instructions are on that page as well. Yeah, I even did an online webinar, and you can even watch the recording. It's about a half an hour or so. I step you through the entire process of from file new to publishing it live. That's awesome. Which is really cool. Cool. Uh, what else? Well, I mean, there's a lot going on in the world of Xamarin with Xamarin Forms, and these plugins work everywhere. Like okay. I said, whether you're only working on Android or even maybe just in Windows, too. Mm -hmm. There's no reason that you couldn't use these plugins. Uh, so I think that's really amazing. Okay. Um, and there's tons of other great libraries out there, like SQLite, that are, are kind of this way. Or um, we have an entire analytics and crash analytics uh, product called Xamarin Insights mm -hmm. that works for iOS, Android, Windows, Windows Desktop, Mac, everything. And that's implemented the same way with uh, separate code abstracted away from you? Exactly, because there's different ways of storing. So the, the Forms team, this will be a, a product that's in preview right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and we thought from a .NET developer's point of view, I want to get access to my managed crashes, my native crashes, and I want to be able to get analytics easily from cross-platform. You know, there's there's multiple services out there from like Marked Up to uh, Google Analytics and Flurry and all these different analytics and crash analytics providers. So Xamarin, we said, well, we want it to be safe, secure, and one beautiful .NET cross-platform library. So you can install Xamarin Insights almost the same way that a plugin's installed, and from one line of code, um, you're able to get all of your crash reports, but then in your shared portable class library, you say Xamarin Insights track this event, report this issue, mm. like when you're in your try catches, and it'll report everything back in real time for you. So you don't have to have different implementations. It's just one nice library for you to take advantage of. Ah, cool. Is that yeah. a commercial product or is that an open source project or what is that? So Xamarin Insights right now is it's in preview. It's a new product from Xamarin. Okay. Uh, when you go to xamarin.com slash insights, uh, crash reporting will always be free. Um, and we're not sure about what it will happen after preview, so we're looking for feedback on that right now. Okay. So kind of when you think about, well, I'm developing, I get to use these great plugins, and I get to integrate insights, and then when I release my app to the App Store, I can get real crash analytics and mm -hmm. tracking right from any of my applications. Yeah, always a challenge on mobile distributed devices, yeah. It is. There's so many devices out in the world. Um, it's hard. You know, I have a few devices sitting around. Of course you do. Yeah, you got to have them all. <laughs> got to collect them all. And I think now, even when you go into the wearable space, right, you have the Microsoft Band, mm -hmm. you have um, Apple Watch, Android Wear, integrating and creating unique experiences. And the Band, I think you're wearing one now, I'm right? Wearing one right now. I don't know if it's an SDK for it, so it'd be tough for Xamarin to integrate with that. So check this out. Let me tell you about this, actually. Yeah, I'm going to learn something right now. You're about to learn something. So Microsoft released uh, Windows Phone SDK uh -huh. for the Microsoft Band. 
they also released a Java and Objective C SDK for iOS and Android. Hmm, I didn't realize that. Recently, it was okay. just recently. Okay. Now they didn't release a Xamarin one. So the nice thing about Xamarin is you can take any Objective C library or Java library and create your own C sharp binding. So you can bring in existing libraries into your Xamarin applications. So we did two things. We first worked with the Microsoft team uh, and created the C sharp bindings for them. Hmm. So Xamarin developers can now access them from iOS, Android, and Windows. Okay. We did one better. We created a plugin for it. Uh, so okay. from one um, cross platform API, you can connect to your band, read sensor data from it, and access that all in your shared portable class library. Hmm. So you say uh, it's cross-platform. Though the the band is uh, is Microsoft thing, but I could access it from uh, an iOS device, for example. Exactly. You can uh, read cool. the sensor data. So imagine um, there was actually a really cool demo when I was at Build last week um, from Laurent, who's the creator of MVVM Lite, which is a great uh, Windows and Xamarin uh, MVVM framework. Mm. Uh, he was having his band, and it was communicating to his Windows phone to, to actually, as you modified and moved your band in real time, would move a three-dimensional cube oh, on the cool. phone. It was very cool. Uh -huh. But you could do that completely now from iOS, Android, and Windows, because it's just connecting over Bluetooth, right. which is really cool. Very minority report. Yeah, it is. Yeah, <laughs> it's very cool. So I think those are the possibilities of taking these amazing potentials that we have on mobile devices and making it simple. One library, one API to access. All right. Very cool. Yeah. You're, you're, um, so you're contributing to the Xamarin site. Are you also blogging? Oh, yeah. I blog all the time, not only on blog.xamarin.com, but I have my own blog. Uh, it's motz.codes. So that's where you can find it. Mots Codes. Mots is my nickname. It's okay. uh, short for Montemagno. For those of us who have trouble yeah. pronouncing it. Yeah. <laughs> motz.codes. It's a very fancy URL. Uh, and I blog all the time. A lot of times uh, developers come, and my whole role is kind of helping developers and giving presentations mm -hmm. and, and being out there in the community. Same with you. That's, too, that's yes. what we're about, helping developers. Yep. Uh, and a lot of times someone will ask me a question on Twitter, on GitHub, and I'll create the project, blog about it, um, and, and help out that way. So you can find me yeah. there and also on Twitter at James Montemagno. Um, uh, nice and short and sweet. That's <laughs> how we did it. Today. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not already. Yeah. And uh, I tweet all the time and help. That's the easiest way to get a hold of me. Okay. Just tweet at me. Yeah. James, thanks so much. Yeah, David, thank you so much. It was great coming on. Yeah.